Hello, everyone, and welcome to another electric playthrough. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to be playing Ninja Gaiden Shadow for Game Boy. Now, I'm not a speedrunner or a professional gamer of any kind. I just picked this game up recently and thought it was pretty fun, so I thought I would do a uh, playthrough for it. Now, this game is um, actually the fourth game in the Nintendo Ninja Gaiden series. There's the original trilogy for the NES, and then there is um, this one. This one came out for Game Boy. It was the fourth one to be released, although it's a prequel to the first one from what I understand. Um, it started out, I believe, as a proof, proof of concept for a port of Shadow of the Ninja for NES to be brought to Game Boy, but I guess Tecmo had other plans and turned it into Ninja Gaiden. So yeah, so this first level is pretty simple. Just avoid enemies. Um, you got your item orb here. Pick up what's called Ninpo. See down there at the bottom? You can hold five Ninpos. And I'll show you what those do here in a minute. It's basically your firepower. Um, now, unlike previous Ninja Gaidens, uh, you can't grab a hold of walls to jump off of. So instead of that, what you have is a grappling hook, which can be used on certain... Uh, rails like this one right here. Now you can either jump up to it and flip up or you can use a grappling hook. Sometimes they're much higher so you know a grappling hook will be necessary but get used to using that. Watch out for the missiles. And now here we have this is another Ninpo. This is a large health vial. It refills four uh, squares of health. There's also small ones. Which I will show you those when we get to them. And then uh, come over here, kill this other guy, and then there's actually a little secret right here to pick up another Ninpo. Boom. There we go. Yeah, like I said, this first level, pretty standard stuff. Um, really, the boss is the most difficult part. What you want to do with him is get directly underneath him and kind of coax him into dropping straight down on you. Otherwise, he'll kind of drop down at an angle and it's a little bit more difficult to avoid. Now, I believe every boss in this game takes 32 hits to kill, so you're going to be doing a lot of sword slapping. See that? I was, I was lucky that I happened to be behind him. But, all right. Boom. This is pretty easy. Didn't have to use any Ninpo. Just keep slapping. Make sure you dance on his grave. Uh, after you finish a boss battle, it actually refills all of your health squares. So, now this is cool. Ninja Gaiden games are, especially in the NES, are known for their awesome cutscenes. And this Game Boy version is no exception. Like, even for Game Boy, like, that looks awesome. And even just um, the sprites of the characters, like the running animation of Ryu here, like, jumping, like, it just looks really clear. Especially for a Game Boy game. I just, I, I immediately loved the graphics. First time I played this. Oh god. There we go. Watch out for the drones. They can kind of swarm you. Now these fire guys, they, they fire slowly and you can jump over the fire. It's safe to just jump up here on the ceiling. Dispatch them at your at your leisure. Boom. You want to get to him quickly so he doesn't attack a second time. Another thing level two adds are conveyor belts. They're not much of a hazard, but you know. Just mind your footing. Don't want to take unnecessarily damage with enemies on conveyor belts. One up, drop, oop, slap. Didn't even need that Ninpo. Oh. See, here's a small health vial. Fills up two. Climb along the rail. Now, if you have full Ninpo, like there's a Ninpo in this orb right here. So I have full, so I'll just, you know, use it up. No need to waste it. It'll kill any enemy it hits in one hit, except for bosses. So it's it's good to um, manage your Ninpo almost as much as you manage your health, because Ninpo will get you out of some sticky situations. Now that one up there has a 1-up in it, and there's not a lot of 1-ups in this game, so you want to grab whatever you can, especially if you're not super familiar with the game. So I'll show you how to easily grab that. I'm going to go under the first two pillars, jump the fire, and then do the third. Oh, 
Oh, that was too slow. Wait for this guy to fire his three little black lemons. Boom. Oh, didn't need to get that, but... Alright, mind your footing, make your jumps. And there's your one up. Although, I will say... Um, while this get, game did take some some learning, some memorizing, um, it, it was just about a day or two of playing before I was able to do a no death run. So this game is considerably easier than the NES trilogy, but it's still lots of fun. So I, I highly recommend picking it up if you love the Ninja Gaiden series, but maybe think that that um, it's a little too difficult for you, or you just want to start out slow, or if you just love ninjas like me. And Poe, and another small health file. Kill the Roombas. Or whatever they are. Oops. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of robots in this game. I believe that's a product of it being a Shadow of the Ninja uh, port originally. I believe there's a lot more robots in that game than in your standard Ninja Gaiden experience. Ugh, these shield guys are really annoying. There you go. Got to kind of get away from them to coax them to drop their shields before you can hit them. Now, this conveyor belt really only serves to slow you down. So if you hop, you go a little bit faster. Avoid the bullets. Keep hopping. Ah, wasn't quite close enough. Oh, you jerk. There we go. Not too much to say about those guys. Pretty easy to avoid. Got a couple more of these shield guys. If I can get them with one Ninpo. Boom, got them. Refill my fifth Ninpo. Get this unnecessary health jar because I'm at full. And then, ready for this boss. This boss, um, also not very difficult. Uh, he's slow moving, his attacks are slow. The main gimmick with him is that he's got this other little guy that uh, runs around. And he, the little guy doesn't do any damage. But if he hits you, he grabs a hold. Oh god. Ugh, and slows you down. So you just want to stay close to him. If you get too far away, he will raise his arm up in the air and do a charge attack. Or, if you're above him, he will punch at you. Whoa. Oh man, didn't think he'd get me. Alright, here comes the charge attack. Maybe use some of these. There you go, just took one more. There you go. Not too tough. I was a little sloppy there, trying to concentrate on speaking while playing. Alright, and now they're both chopped up in little pieces together on the floor. Stage 3. Now there's only five stages in this game, so it's pretty short. We're about at the halfway point. Just about. And then Po. You want to watch out for these guys dropping Secret of the Use canisters or whatever those are supposed to be. But they can be killed with one slash like most enemies. Now you do have to watch out for fire wheels in this level. They're not too hard to avoid as long as you just, you know, be mindful of your timing as you pass by them. Kind of hide up here in this corner and then go. Now that one down there has health in it. That's a small health vial. So it if you're down there, the fire will hit you. Even if you crouch down in the corner. So it's really just not worth going for. Um, I mean, I guess it's possible to 
take one damage and then recover two by getting the vial, and then so it's like you recovered one, but I just, you know, don't worry about it. Some more of these guys, more Secret of Views canisters. Okay, now this is some pretty tricky platforming. Um, you know, just take it slow, wait for the right time to go, and then just go for it. Watch out for the, the, the black lemons he's shooting at you. Ugh, I didn't like it. I can back, backtrack. Here we go. See, it's not so bad. And we get this cool little cutscene where we grab a hold of this, uh, I don't know, crane hook, pull you up whatever structure this is supposed to be, and, uh, yeah, get ready for these electrical diodes, or whatever you call them. Um, not too bad as long as you just, you know, are patient, avoid the bullets, just keep on moving, and then quickly grapple up. Alright, now we got more fire to avoid. Not too too bad. Now these little enemies here, I was gonna mention earlier, they're not hard to beat. Just little little Roomba looking enemies like the other guys kind of, but um, I think they're supposed to be some kind of bomb. So you hit them, they shoot this fire up into the air, and not that that's difficult to avoid, but it's it's oh, see that that's not good. Get out of there. Um, it's easy to get ahead of yourself and hit them and then just immediately start running and you'll hit that fire and take damage for no reason other than you were impatient and forgot. So, you know, just be mindful of the little fire pillars they let out when you kill them. Now, this right here, I've heard people say that item orb there on the far right, you see, is a trap. There's a one-up in there and it'll trick you into picking up the one up so this collapsing ceiling that's about to happen will get you but I found that if you drop in immediately use a ninpo and then just run as fast as you can you'll make it and you'll get a free one up it's a close shave but you still make it all right now this boss gave me some trouble too oops didn't mean to do that okay grapple up to the ceiling and he will shoot wherever you spend your time in the cycle. See, if you can convince him to shoot up and then get out of his way, um, you get some free hits in. I, I like to take my time, be patient with this boss, because he does quick damage. He runs as fast as you, so it's hard to outrun him. He fires out in front of you, but he is predictable, and you can coax him into doing stuff. So, basically, coax him into... Aiming up at you, drop down, do as many slashes, one or two, or even three if you're feeling a little greedy. Go for three slashes, drop down, or jump up, and just repeat the process. If you only get one or two, get at, you know, that's that's fine. It's more important that you retain your health than it is that you beat him quickly. There's no timers in this game, so you can go at your nice, non-panicked, leisurely pace. I found that um, in a lot of games, getting yourself panicked or overwhelmed is what gets you killed. But if you stay uh, level-headed against the bosses in this game, you will do just fine. The patterns are pretty predictable. Even though they are the most difficult parts of this game. There we go. Nice and dead. I will dance right here under Texas. There we go. And you're dead. Alright, moving on to stage four, the second to last level. Uh, the def difficulty definitely steps up a little bit but still not too bad if you know what you're doing. Take out these drones, and then these guys right here are a little bit tricky. They shoot out one, one, two, and then one, two, three. 
and just get to them before they start that cycle over again. One, one, two, one, two, three. Let me get them. One. Mm-hmm. There we go. Not too bad. You just take your time. Running low on Ninpo here, so I'm gonna grab that. Ah, stupid droopy pipes. There we go. Oh, there we go. Ugh, more drones. Ugh, I'm gonna go ahead and Ninpo those guys. All right, this is the dark room. The dark room is actually pretty cool. Uh, it seems difficult at first, but if you just keep moving and know what you're in for, it's not so bad. There's lots of shield guys in here and they can trip you up. So it's important to um, avoid them if you can. So you're just gonna go right over this guy. And then dark room. Keep going, shield guys, item orbs, and then Poe. Then you have the lasers. The platforms will block the lasers, so if you see one coming, ugh. Whoa. Just get underneath some shelter. All right, like I said, you wanna just keep moving. Whoa. And you're at the end already, not too bad. That was a little sloppier than I wanted to be, but, oh, come on. Now I'm gonna run in here. And that little damage I took in there was fine because I'm about to get some pretty good fill-ups. Now they spring the trap on you. Nothing you can do, so just fall. And you have two small health files and an info. Now this next room, was one that I got stuck on for a little bit. Um, it's it's not hard if you know what you're doing, and it's another area where it's easy to panic, but basically fire is going to start coming up. And what I do is I just stay here on the far right, let him go, and watch out for these breaks in the electricity because they will shock you, do damage, I believe, and hold you in place and let the fire catch up. So you wanna just keep moving. Just let this laser hit me because I don't, I haven't found a a uh, good way to avoid it, so whatever. Some more fire Roombas. And then here you have another one up, if you're quick enough. The one on the bottom right is uh, an Ninpo, but uh, I think the life is more important than the Ninpo. This boss was uh, one of the hardest for me. He, um, he will randomly either swoop down like this, so you drop down, and then dodge his fan, it's easy. Just duck, and then when it comes back around, a little horseshoe shape, you jump over. Duck, jump, easy. Um, and keep slashing. He will also throw shurikens at you, which uh, he doesn't seem to, oh, it's a wind close enough. She doesn't seem to want to be doing this time around. Let's see. You always tell he's gonna drop down because he stops floating around with his giant pants, which I'm pretty sure will give him his power of flight. Throw, uh, throw some shurikens, there we go, shurikens. Boom, boom, easy enough to dodge. Yeah, after I figured out his pattern, he actually became one of the easiest bosses, even though he is still my favorite. I just, I really like his pants. Boom, and he's done. Dance on his grave. Refill the health, and now we're on to the final level. Level five is um, is tricky. I like to take it kind of slow at first. There's a lot of um, robots that shoot fire. You'll see. Uh, it's also really important to manage your Ninpo well. Um, because you don't want to be caught without it when you need it. Now this guy, let's drop below him. Let him take some steps forward. There we go. Now if you're up on the ledge right here, 
he will actually run towards you instead of just keeping you at bay with the fire. So I like to just stand here, wait for him to get close, and slap him. Easy enough. Now there's two here. One throws grenades, one shoots fire. I'm just going to min -po him. No need to risk taking damage. Now these guys are a lot scarier looking than they actually are. They just do the same attack, and then he'll drop down. No big deal. I also don't want to risk the fire for this jump, so... An impo. Now there's health in this um, item orb or whatever you call it. So I'm going to go ahead and just avoid it and fight these guys right past it. So if I take damage, I just get a free try. Boom. I don't even need it. But I compulsively pick up items. Okay, Whoop. watch out for the grenades. Wait for him to throw a stupid one. And then jump slash. Jump slash. He's going to drop down at me. There he is. All right, he's gonna throw stupid one. Bam! Two guys, don't wanna risk it, just take them out. We have this guy, and then another guy drops down right there. Then you're done. All right, now we have a whole parade of shield guys. You can get to them quick enough, yeah. Not to worry about them. We also have these lasers that shoot across the floor, so it's an irritating dance. The lasers can be destroyed while they're open like that. They fire and they stay open. Boom. Ah. Stupid fire guy. Okay. And they work together to irritate me right here. Ah, screw you. There we go. Didn't want to waste an impo, but whatever. Alright, drop down. Some health and some ninpo. Just keep moving. Don't worry about the lasers. Now what I like to do here, oosh, is wait for that top one to fire and then ninpo and it'll kill three la or two lasers and then a third enemy at the top. So that's a handy place to use that. Now this part's annoying. So you gotta move quick enough to destroy these lasers, or you can just... Oh, or you can just jump over them, but... I like to destroy stuff. I'll let this last one live. Okay, now we have some upwards auto-scrolling. Uh, this is actually pretty tricky. And if you die at the final boss coming up, you have to redo this entire elevator shaft area. Uh, basically, um, I'm going to be jumping up for these to grab Nin Pose to help with the b final boss. But also you need to jump, duck, and hang to avoid lasers. Ugh. Oof, that was close. Just quick and uh, fancy footwork, knowing what you need to do, whether you need to duck or drop down completely, or jump over a laser like that. See, if I dropped down, that bottom one would have gotten me. So. Wow, right between them. And then we got another drop down right there. What? Oh no! Oh, that was close. Well, that's a health refill, but I wasn't quick enough. Well, I got hit. But uh, I'm fine. I have five lives, plenty of health for the final boss, because I'm going to tell you right now, I practice this final boss a lot. His pattern, while isn't complicated, can be really tricky and easy to mess up on. So for his first drop down, he will, I believe, go to wherever you're standing. So I go right here, and he goes up slower the quicker you slap him. So you need to avoid his lightning, which he shoots at like some kind of... Ugh, a weird angle. Ugh, when you change directions, it's good to jump. Now, it's also good when he starts to drop down to try and be on the part of the platform. Here, I'll kind of show you. See how there's more platform here on the right? That's where I want to be because it makes it easier to avoid when he starts dropping lightning again. For that, and then go. Use my impose on him. Why not? And then 
We are ready for phase two. Phase two was tough. He turns into a giant... Looks like the silver samurai from the Wolverine movie. Ah, there we go. Basically, it's... As soon as he lands... Whew, you duck under the first one and then jump immediately. Your sword is longer than you think. So it's possible... Oh. Ugh, to, uh... Be close enough to him to hit him, but further and far enough away that his fireballs don't hit you when he first spawns them. And there it is. Make sure you do your final victory dance. So yeah, that's Ninja Gaiden Shadow for the Game Boy. Uh, I think it's really fun game, uh, really awesome music, really great graphics, and you get this really slow cinematic at the end but it looks awesome i love the 8-bit style of artwork in this game we have this really dramatic reveal as ryu sheaths his sword after a long adventure and walks away from the collapsing castle I guess we were in this whole time I don't know in the opening cinematic of this game which you didn't see in this video they mention a skyscraper but then you're in a castle I'm not really sure but you know whatever still awesome and then he walks into the sunset I guess basically all that's gonna happen here is the credits are gonna scroll and I'll go ahead and just let this run till the end for anybody who wants to see the credits and the final little artwork at the end so yeah, thanks for watching.